Yes. So this morning, or actually this night, I went to sleep at 10 o'clock. I woke up at 1 a.m. in the morning and, and I was like, ah, oh, I'm so happy and I have so much energy. And I was trying to figure out what would be a good title for this talk. And the only thing I could think about is computers are the best because who wouldn't want a work companion who doesn't get bored, uh, who can do like all of the tedious, repetitious tasks that you hate doing, uh, that doesn't need like a lunch break, who always does things correctly when told things correctly. And I think that is the best part of programming, that you get these like almost superhuman um, skills to get, get this like the best friend in the world, really. Oh, that sounded really sentimental. <laughs> Anyways, I'm, my name is Linda. I'm a children's book author and an illustrator. I'm a very mediocre programmer myself, and I'm a business school dropout. And accidentally, uh, four or five years ago, I was in uh, Helsinki, Finland, and I couldn't find any other women who were interested about programming. And I decided that there needs to be an event uh, to make women excited about programming. And I was kind of solving my own problem because I wanted to learn more about programming but I didn't have that pure group or that, that group of people where I could ask the dumb questions and I felt like that everyone else knew so much and so forth and so forth. And uh, one of my best friends got his out and said that, oh, like our organization, uh, a Rails consultancy called Kiss Collapse, like we could host this. And within two weeks we had whipped up the first Rails Girls event and it was pretty much like 20 20 ish of our best friends in Helsinki region, and like I remember making tomato soup for everyone, like a very low key thing. And we made a website and we were super excited, and we had no idea if this was going to ever work or, or so. And like, never ever in a million years could I have imagined that I would be here standing in front of all of you uh, talking today. Because, uh, let me see, yeah, <laughs> because Singapore. So um, the internet started to talk about this event. And there were all sorts of tweets going on and saying that, hey, like there's some really cool things happening in Helsinki. I wish we had this in the Python community, la la la. And uh, someone from Singapore called Jason Ong, uh, he tweeted at us and said that, hey, we should do this in Singapore. And at this point, like I had never in my life been in Singapore before. I had a very vague idea what Singapore was like. Uh, we had no idea if this curriculum was any good. Uh, we had no budget for anything. but. I was pretty adventurous and again like I had never been to Singapore and I really wanted to go so we packed our bags and this, these were like the drawings I made four years ago and I imagined that you would have changed them by now but no I see they are still the same ones and we came over here and I think it was a few blocks away from here like the original event and I was so so nervous when I was here because I, I wasn't sure if people were going to laugh us out and say like this is a stupid idea like get lost from here but the event went really well and yeah, people tweeted about it, and that's DHH over there, like saying Rails for Girls is really cool, and DHH is the founder of Rails Girls. He's like this re uh, of Ruby on Rails the framework, and he's this really like bad mouth uh, Danish guy with a really cool hair. And I remember printing out that tweet and putting it on my wall. I'm like, wow, this is the biggest moment in my life. Like DHH knows what I'm doing, and uh, there was something very special about what we were doing because we wanted to teach programming in a way that made it human and in a way that made it seem like the people who are here, the people who write the code, they are humans as well and there's a lot of sort of culture and, and compassion in the programming scene and you need to ask from your coaches who is maths, who is DHH, um, who is why, like ask who is tender love, the Ruby community has so much, yeah, it's a real person, <laughs> you're laughing now but you'll hear, <laughs> hear soon enough. Uh, why do Ruby programmers like bacon? Like all of these questions that are there that make programming so magical and fun in the Ruby community. And today, Rails Girls is this huge network of passionate local grassroots organizers in over 230 cities around the world. So people in Amman, in uh, Egypt, in Australia, in US, in Singapore, in Vietnam, in Helsinki, in Berlin are all doing this. And I figured, like, I'm not probably the best person to teach you programming, but I can, can tell you about the Rails Girls network and kind of what you're getting yourself into by being a part of the local, uh, the global Ruby community. So, I think a really important thing to understand is that this is all done by volunteers. 
every single person who is here on this Saturday morning is doing this because they want to see more diverse Ruby community and a more diverse programming community. And this isn't happening only in Singapore, it's happening everywhere in the world. And the coach is, like, I could have written the world's best or worst curriculum, but it doesn't make any difference unless, like, the local Ruby developers take this into their hearts and feel like they want to do this stuff further. And when you go to GitHub and you see all of the comments made by the coaches around the world, like they make the curriculum better every single day, they create new content, it's really, really exciting to see. And that's, that's what's allowed RailsCons to become such a movement that doesn't have, like there's never been any central funding, there's never been any like legal structure around RailsCons, it's all happened very, uh, because of people who want to see that change. Uh, one of the really exciting things about Rails goes is that content changes through interaction, so nothing is ever ready uh, in this world. So the curriculum we used four years ago, it has expanded, it has become better, it has become more simple because, because of the people who change it. And I want you to remember this point because uh, all of you can be a part of this global community of changing things, of like maybe you spot a typo in the, in the guides and, and you can go and like fix that stuff. And that's why. That's what allows software to become so much better over time because we build on top of each other instead of trying to sort of, no, I own this, like, don't touch, this is my thing. Uh, we open up things and share them with everyone. That's allowed computer science to become so massive in the last years. Uh, so you'll get to know these guides soon enough and there's a lot of material for you to go through um, in a second. Uh, this is kind of a more general point about the Rails Code community and the Ruby community. There are so many different ways for you to participate in this community. Uh, there's people who write the code for sure, and like who are the Rails committers and the Rails core committers and Ruby core committers, but there's also people who make educational materials, who ask really good questions, who do uh, bug uh, triaging, who try to find like problems from the source code. Then, who organize events like this. So there's so many different ways to be a software developer nowadays and be a part of a community and learn more. Uh, one of the proudest things for me is, is the idea that Rails Girls is full of leaders, not only followers. I think it's really like weird the way our society is obsessed with like Twitter followers and Facebook followers. My number one goal has always been to allow as much sort of uh, leadership and as much um, independence for each chapter that is out there and that means that sometimes I don't have any idea what's happening in the in the local like chapters but it also means that stuff like this happens so Rails School Summer of Code some of you might next year want to um, participate in this so this is entirely run by the Berlin team by the good folks of Travis CI uh, and the first time Annika told me that it would be really cool if we could take the Rails Girls teams or like the most like excited uh, beginners from each Rails Girls group and make like a global summer program where they could get to contribute to open source software and get paid and get mentorship. And I was like, are you mad? Like there's no way that's gonna happen. <laughs> and in my mind, there was no way that that was gonna happen. But in Annika's mind, it was totally clear that this was gonna happen. And she was such a boss and just made this happen. And now it's the third time that it's running. It's a global, um, so, for those of you who are not familiar with the Summer of Code concept, it's the idea is that you get beginners uh, to work on open source projects, you get mentorship, you get funding, and you get to see if you really want to become a software developer. And Singapore totally should apply to this uh, as well. There's been teams in India, in US, in uh, Europe, in S South America, everywhere in the world. So this is something. And oh, yeah, you can also participate as a volunteer team. So if you don't get selected as one of the team, you can still benefit for, again, the community. Oops. <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna take any more time. I just wanted to give you like three small things to uh, take because many of you are gonna be so overwhelmed and exhausted after this day and be like, I hate programming, this is not gonna be my thing. And it's completely, totally normal. Rails Girls is a packed day. We want you to feel overwhelmed. And the idea is, many people ask, like, why start with Rails? It's, an, like, it's a really hard language to understand and master. The idea is that you build something visible today, and then you have the rest of your life to understand what actually happened during those <laughs> building sessions. So don't feel overwhelmed if you're like, what is this scaffold thing? Like, how does this work? The idea is that you build something really rapidly that you can be proud of, you can show to your colleagues next week, and then you come back to these Rails Girls events, and, and then you actually learn what's happening. And uh, I work with a lot with kids, and one of the, the saddest things with little girls, for instance, is that they forget one semicolon from their code, or one like paraphrase, or something like that, and they are like, I'm really bad at programming. 
wrote it. No, you're not really bad at programming. Making mistakes is such an important part of coding. Even the best coders in the world, they make mistakes every single day. And I've ne yet to hear about a profession where they pay you so much for making mistakes every single day. So if you feel like, like I'm, there's a typo here, I'm stupid. No, you're not stupid. Like every single programmer goes through that. That's part of the profession to sort of endure that process. Second tip. Uh, asking questions is an important part of coding. If you feel like I didn't get that or I don't know stuff in advance, like that's okay. All the programmers I know, they Google stuff every single day. Like the ability to find and solve problems is like one of the paramount uh, characteristics of, of a good programmer because programming changes all the time. Rails as a framework is like 10 years old, roughly seven, well, something like that. And it means that things change all the time, so you need to be really good at asking questions. And yesterday at Red Dot, uh, Tenderlove, who you'll hear hopefully about more later, said that like, you need to ask the question why. Like, if you run into a problem with your code, ask why, and don't settle to the like to your coach saying, "Oh, it's like some sort of magic happens there." Like, really, like pester them about like why this is happening. I don't understand, and and learn to Google yourself too. So when you run into a problem, don't first ask the coach. First, try to solve it yourself, and then ask the coach. Because that's also gives you the skills uh, to keep going as your programming advances. And final piece of information. This is like the big key that took me four years of programming to understand that big problems are just small problems stuck together. <laughs> Super simple, but like whenever you run into like, when you look at Facebook, you're like, I could never build a Facebook. But when you chop it into smaller problems, okay, so I need a user login. I need some sort of a database. I maybe need some sort of a feed here. And then I maybe need like an ability to post pictures. That's how you get ahead. And many of you may might have some sort of ideas in your head now, like what you want to build. And it's okay if you don't. But the idea is that like, you can't build a Facebook for dogs in one day, but you can probably make the user login in one day, or like, like a sign-up form or something like that. So just take a big problem, start working through it job by job. And with that, uh, I'm going to skip through that. I think it's really awesome to see all of you here, and I'm so privileged to be back in Singapore. I, like, you can't imagine how... like. I feel about seeing all of you here and seeing this whole thing grow. Uh, you're going to have such an amazing day today. You all have so much potential inside of you. It's not going to be an easy journey, but I'm really, really happy that you took this Saturday off and decided to like dedicate some time for this. And uh, thank your coaches because they are doing amazing, and, and the sponsors and everyone like this. This wouldn't. This would cost so much money, you guys. <laughs> you're so, so that's that's part of like. Yeah, they really want to see you come back to this community and, and be a part of it. With that, yeah. yes. <laughs> awesome.